Yeah, what do you want? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't even count. Seven. Uh, seven, I tried to say then. No, I didn't go for lunch yesterday. I went home yesterday. I walked home. It was a beautiful morning, so I decided I'll walk home. Then I had a little snooze after cooking myself bacon and eggs. What sort of time do you call this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Malice, can I have hot boards or are you going to yeah. use them first? Um, can I use them first and, I'll, and then I'll, I'll release them immediately? Bloody better, or they'll be trouble Absolutely, or else they'll be trouble. Very strange fellow, that Malice. Good morning and welcome to today's Business Europe here on CNBC. I'm Guy Johnson. Our headlines so far this morning, Argentina's Economy Minister Domingo Cavallo and the entire cabinet have resigned, throwing the country's reforms into doubt as thousands take to the streets to protest against austerity measures. Overnight, Comcast wins control of AT&T's broadband to form the world's largest cable operator. The deal creates a company valued at $72 billion dollars with 22 million subscribers. Good morning there, Manus Cranny. As AT&T and Comcast get together, what does that mean for the European telco market and cable market? I'll give you a preview. Stay with me. And good morning. I'm Leon Hawthorne. Coming up in the world news, Argentina's president blames political agitators for whipping up the riots and looting sweeping his country. OK, we have breaking news on Argentina at the moment. It's been a busy last half hour. Plenty uh, of flashes coming across our screens relating to A, the cabinet, uh, and B, to the rioting that is taking place uh, around the country. Let's get out to Manus now for some more details on what we've had. Yeah, Guy, I, essentially what we're seeing is, in the first instance, a complete uh, cabinet resignation handed to De La Rua. Uh, the consequence of that is he has really try, tried to assess it. Cavallo, obviously being the finance minister, has been the linchpin behind rebuilding Argentina. Uh, however, that seriously uh, looks as if it's been under jeopardy. We've had major problems in securing IMF funding. Thanks very much. Uh, Telefonic are much more exposed to Brazil, uh, and therefore that a much more critical story yeah. to see whether it flows over. Uh, into uh, Brazil. Unlikely to do so, as Mass was pointing out. Uh, Telefonic are pretty well hedged uh, in Argentina. Let's stay with the telecom story. Overnight, Comcast has won the battle for control of America's biggest cable television company, AT&T Broadband. The deal will create the world's largest cable operator, valued at some $72 billion in stock and debt. OK, let's get some details on what happened in the bond market. Obviously, we had a big sell-off a few weeks ago. It does seem like it's beginning to recover a little bit. Uh, essentially, yes, Guy. This is uh, another another session really on the upside in terms of price and inverse of that, uh, consequently on yield. Uh, as far as the Tokyo session is concerned, uh, it's been reasonably firm. Two-year notes trading at uh, yield of 3.11. Okay, let's get some international news. We've got an awful lot coming through within the last hour. Let's get the details now from Leon. Thank you very much indeed, Guy. Starting, of course, with Argentina, which has declared a state of siege after a wave of riots and looting sparked by poverty and austerity measures. As his entire cabinet office to resign, President Fernando de la Rua blamed the trouble on political agitators that he labelled enemies of the republic. It's 128.60 against the yen. Cable, 144.96 and the euro. Can't be left out because we've got all these little things which some people want to play with and other people don't. It is the euro. I'm the voice of the euro and this is the sound of the euro. There you go. Uh, euro sterling, 62 cents. <laughs> And Guy Johnson is now just about to fall off the seat because he's finally, finally given up on me, haven't you? I have. Don't touch them because you get it all over your well, hands. Well, I've just it's worked that out now. You could have told me that before I... <laughs> the before I I've, they, they gave me one as well. <laughs> mine's, ah. mine's green. Oh, look, yours green. <laughs> Can I have that? That's much more Irish and I prefer that. Believe me, me, you're quite welcome to. It was Peter Redwood who we were speaking to a little <laughs> earlier on. Peter Redwood, he's at Deutsche, yeah? Yeah. OK. okay. Stuff. Thank you for that. Thank guy. you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure talking to you as ever, Manus. Absolutely, Guy. Great.
It's coming up to Christmas, so it's time to spend money. So we're going to show you a few commercials. After that, we're going to be going to John Holland. He's our reporter in Frankfurt. We've got an ECB meeting going on there. Uh, I'm sure they'll be packed out with things like this. Let's hope not. Um, in terms of what else we're going to be talking about, CNBC's Shelley Carabell will be counting down to the Euro. She will be live from Brussels. Plus, Leon Hawthorne will be back with all the news on Argentina. Stay with us. You're watching Today's Business here on CNBC. Manus, yeah. do you want to get some wet, what's some of those wipe things? Yeah. Have I got time to go to the bathroom? No, I suppose I haven't really. Hello, I'm CNBC's Maria Bartiromo at CNBC's U.S. headquarters, where once again technology takes the spotlight on Wall Street. After the close of trading yesterday, Palm Corporation reported better than expected quarterly results. That's a minute on stocks. I'm CNBC's Maria Bartiromo at CNBC's U.S. headquarters. Welcome back to today's Business Europe on CNBC. I'm Guy Johnson. These are our top stories so far this morning. Argentina's economy minister, Domingo Cavallo, and the entire cabinet have resigned, throwing the country's reforms into doubts. This as thousands take to the streets to protest against the austerity measures. On a number of occasions, we are going to cross live to John Holland. He is in Frankfurt. There he is. We can prove this now. Um, he's going to be talking about the ECB meeting a little later on, plus also what we can expect uh, from the, uh, the German session today. Plenty more to come up after that as well. We're going to talk to Shelley Carabell. Uh, plus, we're also going to be talking about the currency market. So stay with us. You're watching Today's Business here on CNBC on Thursday morning. Hello, this is Today's Business Europe here on CNBC. I'm Guy Johnson. Welcome back to the program. Italian football club Juventus makes its stock market debut today. Just under 39 million shares were offered, priced in the mid-range at 3.7 euros each. With more than 17 million loyal supporters, demand has been high and the retail portion of the offer was 1.2 times oversubscribed. Despite the floats, Juventus vice chairman Roberto Baghetta but dead, I think I can forget the pronunciation on that. I'm never going to get it right. It says the game will always come first. The pitch and the, and the victories will be the main target for us, of course. But uh, we would like to change our, our company, the leisure company, the entertainment company. <laughs> The, uh, our Euro sting, Bajetta, I think it probably is, Bajetta. Uh, anyway, Euro starter kits went on sale last week across the Eurozone. Packets of Euro coins designed to give people the feel of the new money. In France, at least, they were an immediate success. CNBC's Paris bureau chief, Shelley Carabel, went looking for a Euro kit and found most places that actually sold out. Post offices got 12 million of the 53 million Euro starter kits to sell and sold out almost immediately. So did tobacconists. That sent people to the banks for another 33 million kits of 40 euro coins worth 15 euros each. Customers seemed happy to get their hands on the stuff. There's another bigger euro event taking place to, as well today uh, is over in Frankfurt where we have an ECB meeting. I think it's actually going to be a telephone meeting, but let's get the details now. Uh, John Holland has been following the story uh, over in Germany for us. John. Morning, Guy. Thanks, Guy. Yeah, that's right. There is a teleconference meeting today of the Governing Council, uh, which starts later this morning. Now, as you may recall, in November, the ECB decided that they would go to rate cut decision meetings only once a month, the first Thursday of every calendar month. That means that this meeting today is likely to be just a review of its last decision uh, back in uh, early December, as well as uh, how perhaps the, the course of the year has gone in terms of the uh, the cuts that have been undertaken. There have been four so far this year. Spanks looking pretty solid over in Asia. Let's get to Martin Sung for the details. Martin. Hi, morning, uh, uh, Guy. Softer most of the day for the Tokyo market. Uh, three minutes to go. Looks like it's going to close barely in the money, up just eight points. Techs are coming back down. Uh, banks, though, and trading houses doing nicely after that BOJ move to ease monetary policy yesterday. We'll have details coming up in just a bit. 
Thanks very much. We'll get back to Asia in a few minutes' time. Tom Lasky, correspondent at Dow Jones Buenos Aires, will be with us right after this break. Obviously, uh, a lot of news this morning, particularly the resignation uh, of Domingo Cavallo, plus also the rioting that we've got taking place uh, this morning. So an awful lot to talk to about, uh, about uh, the, uh, the situation down in Argentina. Uh, and we'll get the details uh, right after this break. Stay with us.